Welcome to Minister's Message and thank you for your prayers. Last weekend uh, all went well as we reopened our church buildings. Everybody was kept safe and socially distanced and uh, we worshipped God and gave him the glory. We look forward to doing that again this coming weekend as uh, some more people come and worship in person. Uh, but also the services will continue to go out over our YouTube channel at 11 a.m. and at 6 p.m. In the morning I'll be preaching in person in the building and also on the YouTube channel as we continue our series of This Is My Story and this weekend we're going to be meeting uh, the Ethiopian eunuch. Philip meets him uh, as he travels back to his own uh, country, to his own continent in Africa and what are the chances that there would be this African man from the royal family reading the scriptures when a Christian minister from Asia walks past and offers to help him understand it? Well, in that conversation, this Ethiopian eunuch finds Jesus Christ. And in the evening, Ali is going to uh, share with us the vaccine. He has found the vaccine. Maybe not for coronavirus, but he's going to take us to the text in the Old Testament. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Come and find the vaccine. Well, today we're going to travel ourselves uh, to Asia, and we're going to meet Suraj Kasula all the way over in Nepal. Let me hand over to Suraj. Hello and good evening to you all. Warm greetings to you all from the top of the wall, the Everest land, Nepal. I trust you are all well by God's grace. My name is Suraj Kasula. I live in Bhaktapur with my wife, Rosni, and two daughters, Hadassa and Esther. As you can see in my background, the beautiful jungle, God's creation. This is Bhaktapur and the birds are singing and it sounds so wonderful. Adasa, Esther and Rosni send their greetings and regards. Many thanks for your continual prayers and support. We much appreciate. I'm a pastor of Shekhaina Evangelical Church. Our congregation is well. Nobody has been infected by the virus so far. However, the situation of Nepal is getting worse day by day. After about four months, the lockdown was lifted up, but because of the rapid spread of the virus and high death rate, the government decided to lock down again. We are again locked down. Despite the wall had turned upside down, despite the wall is walking through the veil of tears and death, we believe God is absolutely sovereign and in control over each and every situation. Nothing had ever gone, ever go, or ever will go beyond his control. In these days, God's sovereignty is like a comforting pillow on which we lay our heads. Otherwise, there are so many fears to be afraid of. Future and darkness fear that would haunt us. Because God's sovereignty, we rely on God's sovereignty, we are absolutely sure that what had been appointed by our good God will surely come to pass. In these days, I have been preaching about the life of Joseph, Job, and Jesus. They all went to the depths of the suffering and pains, and yet they committed their lives under the sovereignty of God. And we see God's good hands in the darkest hour of their lives. Unlike Joseph and Job, Jesus suffered way more on the cross. He went to the darkest pain and trauma, and yet he could say, Take heart, I have overcome the world in John 16, 33. James Stewart, a famous preacher, once said like this, Jesus did not concur despite of the dark mysteries of evil, but he concurred through it. This quote has been so helpful 
to understand a lot about life of Joseph, Job and Jesus. God brought victory, not despite of dark mysteries of evil, not despite of darkest hour, but he brought victory through it. We are all walk, walking in one way or another, like in the darkness of Jesus, Job, and Joseph. But I'm sure God will conquer our situation, not despite of this pandemic, but he will conquer through it. One of the Valley of Vision prayers said this, I walk through the veil of tears, but I praise thee because I know you will open up the gate of glory at its end. We are praying that God will lift up the gate of our glory at the end of this suffering and pain. I'm using this lockdown time very wisely. I'm doing lockdown Bible study series as our online seminary class. We studied uh, Gospel of John, Galatians, and now we are doing uh, letters to the Hebrew. Also, we are translating the Valley of Vision, a prayer and devotion of Puritans. We read with background video and music, which has been loved by so many Christians across Nepal. Also, we have finished our 10 minutes devotion on Westminster Shorter Catechism, and we are now going to do Heidelberg Catechism as our 10 minute devotion. These are the benefits and fruits of lockdown. Here are some prayer points. Uh, please pray for Nepal as this virus is sweeping across Nepal, killing many more and infecting many people. Please pray that this would stop. I think over 400 people have died and many are in their deathbed. Over 900 people have committed suicide and many will commit in days to come. So please, please pray for prevention. Please pray for the landslide and flood victims as they have lost many of their loved ones and properties. Uh, please pray that God would provide food and shelter for them. Glasgow Presbytery has raised funds towards this victim and we are soon going to do relief program, program after lockdown. Please pray for this work. Please pray for our congregation, Shekhinah Evangelical Church. We have some elderly people who can join our virtual online service. Please pray for preservation of their faith. Please pray for Nepal. It is chaos, one chaos after another. Unemployed problem is resulting in food crisis and economic crisis. I think dark days are on the way for Nepal. Please pray for our seminary, Bhaktapur Theological Seminary, and our mission school, Apex Boarding High School. Please pray for students, the future, uh, future educational sectors of Nepal seems dark, but please pray that God will restore their fortunes in the aftermath of their of this aftermath of this lockdown. Please pray our church plant in eastern Nepal. And it is so encouraging that during this lockdown, two families believe Jesus. And this is wonderful news. We know that our Lord can bring good things out of bad. Because of this lockdown, some of our backslidden people have come to the faith. And it is so wonderful. Once again, I would like to thank you all for your kind prayers and support. We much appreciate that. God will surely do great things in response to your earnest prayers. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you very much, Siraj, for sending that video over to us. We'll be praying for you. And let me encourage the viewers to be praying for Siraj in your own private devotions. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you and we do praise you that you're the God who connects us. It is through you and through what you have done in sending your son Jesus 
that we have an interest in, in, in the work that goes on in Asia and Africa and America and all over the world. Lord, we thank you for our brother Suraj. We pray for him in his own ministry, in his own congregation, in the theological uh, college there as well. We pray for him in his own family with his wife and his two girls. Lord, we thank you for bringing Suraj into so many of our lives, for bringing him to Scotland, for bringing him to Edinburgh Theological Seminary, for, uh, for us being able to share in his infectious love for Jesus Christ. We commit him to you today and to and all the work that he, is, um, that he is doing. We just pray that you would bless it, that you would be with him. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Join us uh, next week where I hope to take you further away and take you all the way to Australia. Okay, thank you and God bless.